One can imagine having a holiday in a motorhome. However, having to live in a motorhome is much harder. The camper is perhaps the only thing that still remains as part of the American dream. When the Clements house was taken by the bank, they gave away their old furniture and drove to Southern California. Since then, they've lived within 13 square meters and are constantly on the move. Most of the time, they live in car parks. Well, who wouldn't like parking next to the beach? I mean, it's, you know, it's million dollar real estate for free. You know, and I don't have to pay taxes on it. I don't have to pay rent for it to look at it. I just pull up and there it is. Since the beginning of the mortgage crisis, one and a half million Americans lost their homes. Life at the roadside means a big change. The electricity now comes from a noisy generator and the water is drawn from the public toilets at the beach. The reason that this family have ended up here is due to large debt, larger than the value of their house. As a result, the father, who works as a forester, lost credit and could no longer afford the house. So we can get some money coming in. Basically, um, she cut the, the price of the house 120000 within a month. And then when she got done selling it, as we we're getting ready to move, and we said, where's our equity? She said, there's nothing left. So we ended up with nothing and on the street, basically. So um, then we had to just use the trailer, which I, as he'll tell you, I originally said, there's no way I will ever live in this trailer. I'll divorce you first. Since the mortgage crisis, the streets are filled with people for whom cars have become dwellings. But sleeping in a car in California is illegal. Shaw Tally works for a small social project that attempts to combat this issue. We've got, you know, one, two, three vehicles, and these people are living on the streets, and they're playing the cat and mouse game with, with um, the cops. People have been buying trailers because they just can't sustain, obviously, the mortgage, the mortgage crisis, they, they, the bank for, uh, forecloses on their house, they move into the trailer, and then they're, now they're, they're having to find places to park the trailer, move the trailer from campground to campground, um, then you're commuting more, um, then you're trying to figure out where are you going to shower, uh, where are you going to cook, how are you going to fill up with propane, where are you going to get water from, so it, your house has become mobile. Barbara Harvey is 54 years old and has lived in her Honda for two months. Her case as a victim of the US housing crisis is particularly unique, as she was one of the civil lawyers who authorized risky loans. I work as a notary public signing loan documents for people who want to remortgage their homes. And Actually, because of the financial and economic and housing crisis here uh, in America, I actually just suddenly didn't have any work, and that was my income. I knew that once that happened, within, within six weeks after that happened, I was, um, I was out of the house. Well, this is my house, or it was my house for seven years. A rented apartment with four large rooms, it had everything. There was no insurance on this house. Well, it was nice while it lasted anyway. Today, Barbara is dependent on the help of others. I knew I always had a home to come home to, you know, somewhere to come and, and take a nap if I wanted to, or somewhere just to come home and have a cup of tea. And there isn't anywhere to do that now. You know, it's my car or it's an office. Um, it might be a friend's house from time to time, but it isn't, I don't have a home anymore. Social worker Shaw Tally is open every day to help people who are the mobile homeless. David Clements, above all else, wants a new job. Uh, how is the, the job hunting going? It's going good. Going it's going well. good. Uh, actually, put an application in for the easy, easy lift. Easy lift, yeah. And Crystal told me that there, it fell through. It fell through. Shake it again and 
It is a vicious cycle. Without a job, no home. Without an apartment, no job. Very difficult life. Not having electricity, not being able to store food because you don't have electricity to power your refrigerator. Um, there's a lot of things that would make life life difficult. And what you're constantly doing is just surviving, constantly working on that. So if if you need to be going and, and looking for housing or, or looking for a job um, or doing other things, um, uh, you don't have that much time to do that. Rick Siebold has solved one of the problems of everyday life. He has lived in a camper van for 25 years and is happy on the roads in Southern California. He gets power from wind and solar energy. All of that power goes into this in here. I have four Trojan T105 golf cart batteries. This right here is my refrigerator, so the sun and the wind keep my food cold, which is pretty cool. Rick has expanded his old Dodge and saves on rent. Since he suffers an immune deficiency, he can only work irregularly but he has made arrangements. Being by yourself isn't fun. I, I don't like that part, but there aren't too many females that would like this lifestyle, unless they were possibly in that situation themselves. But, uh, but you, you learn to deal with it. The key to life, I think, is being uh, thankful and grateful for the things you do have. Former lawyer Barbara Harvey goes to her sleeping quarters. It has one of the few parking spaces where you can stay overnight without offending the police. Baby, come here, sweetheart. There's a good girl. Good girl. Okay. This zone is part of the safe parking program created by the city administration and the church. I clear this whole area at night time. This is, I put this back in the morning like this and I clear it at night and put it in the front and put things underneath the car. So here's my, my clothes. The rest is in storage. There's, I've never had very many clothes, actually. Um, probably a good idea. Some women have huge wardrobes, but and actually mine needs to be renewed. It's um, getting a little bit grubby, but um, <laughs> it's, it's workable right now, so not to worry. Rick Siebold is getting on well. He sometimes works as a chauffeur for a limousine rental firm. He hasn't told anyone that he lives in a camper van. No, no, absolutely not. Nobody knows where I live. My boss doesn't even know where I live. I just, uh, what they don't know doesn't hurt me. I don't, I don't share that with anybody on the need to know basis. He only speaks to us because Europe is so very far from here. Social worker Shaw Tally finishes a day with a personal success. He has found an apartment for his protege, Kathy. How do you, how do you know it? Woo! After five long years on the street, Kathy Lopez found a place in a social hall. Today, she exchanged a car seat for a mattress. Whoa, check out that bed. Oh, my word. Today, she's found a happy ending, the American dream of a self-determined life. And I was down for a little while. It's like Shaw said, it's a new beginning for me. I'm starting all over again. I got the key. <laughs> Sit over here on this thing with me. It's a nice bed. What do you think? Oh, it's a nice bed. It's a nice Whoopee! Bed. <laughs> it is. It's a nice bed. Baka's going to so love it. Well, thank you. you. This is just... For Kathy, the nightmare has ended. Tonight, in Santa Barbara, 500 others are still sleeping in their cars. So you guys can go through and see.